It's looking like the next wide receivers coach at the University of Miami is going to be a Miami alumnus. You are Locked on Canes, your daily podcast on the Miami Hurricanes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. I am Alex Dono, your host. I'm a University of Miami alumnus. Maybe I'm the next wide receivers coach. <laughs> no, nobody wants that, believe me. I'm also a longtime South Florida sports radio vet and a contributor at allhurricanes.com. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We are available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. This episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. So we talked on yesterday's episode about the fact that Leonard Hankerson has interviewed for the wide receivers coaching job at the University of Miami. And I believe that first interview happened several days ago, and maybe that wasn't classified as a formal interview. But Hankerson is interviewing again, and it's reportedly happening today, Friday. Per 24-7 Sports, Leonard Hankerson is interviewing today. Uh, it's being referred to in that report as a quote-unquote formal interview. So maybe the last time around it was more of a casual conversation to gauge interest. Now he's formally interviewing for the wide receiver coaching job. Um, to me, getting a follow-up interview and getting one that's now being classified as a formal interview, I think that's a very good sign that Leonard Hankerson could very well be the favorite here to be the next wide receiver coach at the University of Miami. Now, uh, this is not yet done. It's not yet a slam dunk, I don't believe, because obviously, even if Leonard Hankerson, if he is the guy that Mario Cristobal likes the most, you still have to work out a contract. You still have to convince him to leave his job in the NFL, because that's a consideration here, because it's still, it's hard for me on the one hand, to imagine someone who is a so far successful NFL wide receivers coach for a very good team in San Francisco. I mean, the 49ers, a very strong team, a strong wide receiver core. It's hard for me to, to imagine someone in Hankerson's position willingly leaving that job for a, a lateral move in the college ranks. But if he does want it, I fully support Leonard Hankerson to be the next wide receivers coach at Miami. I think it would be a home run hire. I mean, he likely would like to be closer to home and family because he's got a lot of family in this area. His roots are here. And yeah, perhaps Hankerson will get extra motivation from the idea of helping his alma mater. And I'm sure that if Miami wants to get him here, they would probably have to offer him more money or considerably more money than he's making in San Francisco. If they're willing to pay it, bring him home. Bring the man home. He's got college coaching experience, which is good because he knows what it means to be a recruiter. He's got NFL coaching experience, so he's got a proven track record of you know developing talent and, and working with great talent at the wide receiver position because obviously working with a guy like Debo Samuel every day, he can probably learn as much from Debo as Debo can learn from him, and he can take that knowledge down to the University of Miami. So I would love it. I would love it if Leonard Hankerson ends up getting this job. So if he is offered it, and I have no reason to believe to this point that he has been offered the job, maybe, hopefully, that happens at some point today or this weekend. Uh, I would fully support Leonard Hankerson to be the next wide receiver coach at Miami. Um, but as we talked about yesterday, there are other good options out there. Now, I think the other good option we talked about yesterday will not end up, likely will not end up getting this job. But um, I mentioned at the top that this could end up going to an alumnus, okay? And another Miami alumnus, former Miami wide receiver, uh, interviewed for the job uh, reportedly yesterday. Kevin Beard, he won a national title at the U in 2001. He's been a receivers coach at Miami before. Kevin Beard, again, if Miami could get him back down here, I think this would be a great hire. Currently the receivers coach at Toledo. He works under Jason Candle there. He's been at Toledo the last six years, so they really like him there. He's apparently liked it enough to stay there for that long, but maybe now he's finally looking for the change of scenery. And yeah, KB, he worked as receivers coach at Miami back in 2015. He was a quality control analyst in 2014. 
receivers coach in 2015. And then when Mark Richt came in in 2016, he wanted to rehaul his staff. So he did not retain Beard. Uh, so it was more of a change of staff thing. Like he wasn't like, you know, he wasn't fired because of poor performance. He was, you know, he was not retained because the next head coach wanted to bring in his, bring in his own guys. Uh, Kevin Beard is also, before he got to Toledo, he worked uh, as a quality control coach at Georgia and as a wide receivers coach at Tennessee. And he's also got some high school coaching experience. He was a wide receivers coach at university school before he coached at Miami. So he's got tons of experience. And uh, the wide receivers at Toledo have been very productive under his watch. Uh, he's been coaching them up for the past five years as wide receivers coach. I think he was a quality control coach for the first year there. And Kevin Beard has always been considered one of the top recruiters in the MAC. Uh, okay, so he's been one of the better recruiters in that conference. And this is another strong hire. I mean, I something about Hankerson just gets me slightly more excited, but I'd be down with bringing KB back. I would have no issue with that. Uh, and yeah, you know, what I mentioned about alumni, uh, it was mentioned by Gary Furman at Kane Sport that Cristobal may be leaning towards hiring an alumnus for this job. I don't know if like he's doing that just because he wants someone who knows like what it means to put that U on their helmet and kind of loves and appreciates Miami the same way he does. Or if it just so happens that there's a lot of Miami alums out there like Kevin Beard and Leonard Hankerson, who, you know, not only used to play for the U, but also are really darn good coaches at their respective spots. Okay. Uh, and Furman also thinks that, Lamar Thomas could get an interview for this job if he wants to interview for it. Uh, you know, maybe he does, maybe he doesn't. He's currently coaching in the XFL for what that's worth. Um, you know, another one uh, that people have been asking me about a lot the past couple of days, and I haven't talked about it much on this show. Um, this is not a University of Miami alumnus, but a lot of people are asking me if Lonnie Galloway is a candidate for this job. He's the receivers coach at North Carolina. He's done an outstanding job there, Galloway. And I think the reason why fans are bringing up his name a lot is, I think I saw it on the Miami Rivals site, they listed Galloway as a, a person of interest for the job. Now, I guess it makes sense to bring his name up because he's worked with Shannon Dawson before. So there's a connection to Miami's offensive coordinator. But personally, as far as Lonnie Galloway goes, um, I haven't heard anything about him being a candidate here. Again, that doesn't necessarily mean he's not because the loafers move in silence, but I've I've never actually from, you know, people I talk to, I've never seen his name actually brought up. And from the North Carolina side, they've taken care of him, like in a big way. Like they appreciate Lonnie Galloway because in addition to being their wide receivers coach, he's also been tagged uh, their assistant head coach. He got that tag prior to the season last year. And then coming into next season, he's been – tagged as their passing game coordinator so they keep giving this guy more money more titles more promotions I mean North Carolina is going to do whatever they can to keep Lonnie Galloway on the staff and I, I don't have any reason to believe that he's looking around for other jobs uh, I couldn't find his exact salary information online but um, I heard he's being paid very well by North Carolina he's probably one of the higher paid you know position coaches in college football and so personally I think it's going to come down to Leonard Hankerson versus Kevin Beard here. Now, we talked yesterday about another candidate, someone who's interviewed that I really like, and that's Keith Williams, who is the uh, a currently a, a passing game specialist with the Baltimore Ravens. But I wonder if Keith Williams, he might now be the favorite to be promoted to wide receivers coach in Baltimore. Because T. Martin, who was their wide receivers coach, who, by the way, is definitely not coming to Miami, uh, T. Martin was just moved from receivers coach to quarterbacks coach with Baltimore, which makes sense because he's a former quarterback. Uh, and so Keith Williams, he was working under T. Martin. So if Baltimore likes him, they might promote him to wide receivers coach. Um, and also, like, I can't stress this enough. When we talk about, you know, occasionally names will leak, like, hey, this person is interviewed, that person is interviewed. Mario Cristobal likes to perform tons of interviews for open jobs because he uses interviews like seminars. He wants to learn as much from the candidates as they learn from him. Like he doesn't just interview them. He also talks shop with them, talks about their philosophies, gets their football insights because Mario Cristobal is always trying to learn and evolve from others. Uh, so, you know, 
you may hear about certain names that interview for for jobs and it doesn't necessarily mean they're like a, a top candidate because sometimes Mario just likes to cast a very very wide net when he's looking for assistant coaches now when we come back uh, a pretty exciting piece of information I think on a uh, a certain Miami quarterback target who's uh, actually moved his visit back he's moved it to a different date which i think is a really really good thing and we're also going to talk about what mario cristobal had to say about his new coordinators because he did a hit this week on the joe rose show and he talked about lance gidry now coaching up the defense shannon dawson now coaching up the offense all that means is guys we have a lot coming up on this episode of locked on Kane. so do not go anywhere if you do go somewhere Go to FanDuel Sportsbook and start looking at that NBA slate for tonight, college basketball slate for this weekend. Guys, we're so happy to have FanDuel now on board with the Locked On College Network. And it this is the perfect time, midway point of the NBA season. It's the best time to download FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drained. My Miami Heat are finally back in action tonight against uh, Milwaukee. The Heat are one and a half point underdogs. No Giannis Antetokounmpo, so that's kind of interesting. I've told you guys, I, I've been doing really well on Bam Adebayo overs this year. His over-under is 21 and a half points tonight, so I'm definitely going to be taking a close look at that. And guys, you're going to have so much fun when you play these games on FanDuel. FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So do not miss the chance to get your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts and available free on YouTube. Uh, it's a really happy Friday for us here because this is a two-episode day on Locked on Canes. Uh, later on today, late afternoon, we're going to have a pro football focus number crunching conversation with Max Chadwick from PFF. We're going to talk about uh, the safeties, James Williams and Cam Kitchens, because PFF has them both ranked in their top five returning safeties in the country. I want to ask him about Tyler Van Dyke. I want to ask him about Leonard Taylor. So we're going to have a great conversation later today with Max Chadwick from PFF. And we're going to talk some recruiting with John Garcia Jr., our locked on recruiting expert. So, I mean, can Friday get any better? Two episodes of Locked on Canes on a Friday. This is the best, man. Uh, so, okay, this is pretty cool. You guys know that one of the quarterbacks we really love in the class of 2023. I love a few of them, okay? Because I also, I really love A.J. Hairston, who's a show favorite, who's been offered. Um, I also like, um, we were talking about Marcos Davila yesterday. I like Marcos Davila, but boy, do I love Air Noland. Air Noland, heading into his senior season at uh, in Georgia, is really uh i think a perfect fit in this offense when you talk about his dual threat capabilities his strong arm his accuracy his qu his quick release so noland was going to be visiting miami on march 4th which is a very busy junior day and according to steve wiltfong of 24 7 he's changing the date of his miami visit uh wiltfong writes his coral gables trip has been moved from the first weekend in march to the 23rd and the 24th of March. Then he's going to be visiting Ohio State the following weekend, March 31st through April 1st. And here's why I think Noland pushing back his visit is a really, really good thing. So he was going to come on March 4th when there's going to be something like 25, 30, 40 visitors coming in for that very busy junior day. I think to get a priority target like Air Noland, to have him coming at the end of the month where they can spend exclusive time with him, where Mario Cristobal and Shannon Dawson can spend more one-on-one -on -one time with him, get him into that film room, have some longer conversations. That's way better, okay? Because obviously, like, March 4th is going to be a big day, but it's going to be so chaotic because you're going to have so many prospects here that, you know, any of the individual prospects coming in on March 4th are not going to have as much face time one-on-one -on -one with coaches. You get a priority quarterback target like Air Noland to come in at a later date where he can be more of the priority on that visit. 
I think that's fantastic. And this is someone who he's very sought after, but he's said really good things about Cristobal in Miami. Uh, Nolan said, quote, Mario Cristobal, he's been very straightforward with me. He loves my personality, loves everything about me. He thinks I'm a program changer, and he communicates with me on a day-to-day basis. And also, the new hire they got, Coach Dawson, he recruited me real heavy at Houston. That was a great hire for them. Of course, the institution they have and the great legacy Coach Cristobal has. So uh, I think it's really cool that Noland is going to be coming in at a time when they could really, really prioritize him, okay? Uh, I wanted to go back to something on the uh, the wide receiver coach search because, you know, we brought up uh, how the momentum, it feels like Leonard Hankerson versus Kevin Beard. Like those two might be the favorites right now. We brought up why I don't really get the sense that Lonnie Galloway from North Carolina is a candidate and why, you know, Keith Williams, even though he interviewed – uh, may not end up being, you know, a strong candidate for this job. Another name that we've talked about so much on this show, and I'm wondering if there's anything going on uh, new with him, but uh, James Coley. I I don't know uh, if there's anything new with Coley, and some of the rumblings that I've heard on him is that he was interested in the offensive coordinator job, maybe not so interested in being the wide receivers coach that, you know, he, he might've wanted the job that Shannon Dawson ultimately got. Um, now my thought on Coley, who I really love is I would, I would love to get him on the staff in any capacity, right? He could, he could coach tight ends. He can coach wide receivers. He can coach quarterbacks. You know, you can have this guy, you can have him coaching the cheerleaders. I don't care. I just want, I want James Coley on the staff because he's such a, a great recruiter and I just think he's such a positive influence to have around these young men because he's just he's just an awesome human being like he's a great coach and an equally great human being uh but I don't know I, I don't really hear anything new going on with him in terms of the wide receiver coach opening so you know I, I I'm still I still feel like today Friday that Leonard Hankerson and Kevin Beard might be the favorites. I'm not as convinced today as I was, you know, maybe a week, two weeks ago that Coley is going to end up on this staff, but I would love to have him. Like if, if you get, get him a spot as an assistant coach on the basketball team and let him recruit football player, like whatever you have to do, I would love to get the guy in the building in some way, shape or form. But uh, I don't know if it's going to happen at this point. Uh, so We've got some cool comments, some rave reviews, and you would expect them to be rave reviews, right? When Mario Cristobal is talking about people that he has hired, but some of Cristobal's thoughts on his new defensive coordinator and his new offensive coordinator when we come back right here on Locked on Canes. And thank you so much for making Locked on Canes your first listen today. We're available free wherever you get your podcasts, and we are available free on YouTube. So uh, Mario Cristobal did a weekly spot uh, with the Joe Rose show, my pal Joe Rose down at 560 WQAM. And this is what he had to say about Shannon Dawson. And man, I, it just, it reinforces everything we've been thinking here on Locked on Canes about why Mario Cristobal thought Dawson, former OC at Houston, now the OC at Miami was such a strong hire for him. He says, he's an elite play caller and quarterback coach, Cristobal said. Part of his history is being in the air raid system. But as you can see over the last several years, those guys have transformed and evolved into guys that get downhill in the running game with power, counter, split zone, and pin and pull, and all that good stuff. So, yeah, we've been saying it for the last couple of weeks, that just because Shannon Dawson comes from an air raid coaching tree doesn't mean that he doesn't appreciate the line of scrimmage. He does and that he doesn't appreciate the running game because he does. And people assume, oh, an air raid play caller. That must be like 70% passing, 80% passing. Last season, Houston threw the football on 56% of their downs. That's that's not a crazy ratio. 56% of the time, they threw the football. 44% of the time, they called running plays. Miami was at 53% passing and 47% running last year. That's it's not a dramatic difference whatsoever. So it's not like this guy is not going to call running plays. And yeah, I think the most important thing for Dawson is know your personnel. Okay. When you've got running backs that have a lot of potential, if they can stay healthy, like Don Chaney, Toronto citizen, Henry Parrish, Mark Fletcher, Chris Johnson, you've got a stable of running backs like that. You can't leave these guys in the garage, okay? 
other people have been worried. Is he going to use Miami's tight ends enough? Well, yes, I believe he will. And he's also going to find creative ways to line these guys up because, yeah, when you have people like Jaleel Skinner and Elijah Arroyo and studs like uh, Jackson Carver and Riley Williams coming in, you're going to find a way to use these guys. Like it's Shannon Dawson's job to find a way to adapt the offense to his talent not vice versa, right? You, you find a way to get your talent involved. It's something the previous offensive coordinator was not very good at. Hopefully this one is. Uh, Cristobal continued. He says, what we expect is a very explosive enhancement to the offense and a guy that knows how to get the ball to playmakers with a fortified and enhanced offensive line. And that's going to help Tyler Van Dyke so much as well. A fortified offensive line. You bring in someone like Matt Lee, who is bossing, the offseason strength and conditioning program and was one of the top three most productive centers in the entire country last year. You bring in someone like JV on Cohen, one of the most productive guards in the country last year coming from Alabama, hasn't given up a sack in his career. You're fortifying the offensive line. If Zion Nelson can stay healthy next year, you are fortifying the offensive line. Jalen Rivers, Inez Cooper, if these guys can all stay healthy, you're fortifying that offensive line in a big way. And you've got a handful of true freshmen who I believe can play right away if needed to, whether they start or whether they rotate in. You can't tell me Samson Okunlola and Francis Maui Goa can't get on the field and contribute next year because they absolutely can. So that enhanced offensive line, it's going to make your play calling look a lot better, and it's going to make your quarterback look a lot better. And, yeah, it's also going to make your running backs look a lot, be lot better. So I love that. Uh, here's what Cristobal said about Lance Guidry. Schematically, He's really hard to play against, and I have played against him before. You're never sure where the pressure is coming from, and you're not getting the same picture every snap, and that makes it hard for an offense to play against. That is one thing we had to take a drastic step in, he said. Last year, we were implementing a system, and we stayed vanilla during the course of the year, and this defense gives us a chance to be dynamic, he said. So I love that. Uh, he also says that Guidry is a strong communicator. Uh, the thing I like about him is he gets his guys to really, really, really play hard, Cristobal said. They are flying all over the place and knocking people around. They get to the ball in a hurry, and they finish. They are good tacklers, and they are schematically aware of where their help is. So not that you would expect anything different, but there's Mario Cristobal speaking very highly of his new coordinator hires. So remember, folks, we've got another episode coming up later today. We're going to talk. Uh, PFF analytics talk about Miami returning players with Max Chadwick from pro football focus. And we're going to talk some recruiting with John Garcia, Jr. Recruiting expert here on the locked on network. But before we go, I want to throw some shout outs to some new uh, iTunes reviews. Cause I love it. When you guys leave us five-star reviews, it's like every time you leave locked on canes, a five-star review, an angel gets its wings. Like it's so it's such a welcome sight when I see these and I, I can't thank you guys enough for it. Uh, we get a new five-star review on Apple podcast from, from Tay diesel 76. He says, I really enjoy locked on canes. It's short enough to listen to daily, but long enough to be informative and entertaining. That's why I talk really fast. We keep it short and sweet here. It says I listen every day from here in London, England. Yo, welcome from across the pond. Thank you so much, T Diesel or Tay Diesel, from listening uh, on the other side of the pond, you bloke. That was bad. I hope you don't stop listening after I, I tried to, to imitate the accent over there. Enjoy some fish and chips today, Tay Diesel. Uh, we get a, a new review from DC1984, five star. He says, I enjoy making Alex Dono my first listen of the day. My wife gets a kick out of it when I tell her that every morning. All right. So, hey, listen, why why listen to your wife first thing when you can listen to us instead? Thank you so much. And we get a new review. Uh, is oh, I, I think I think I already read this one from Sapper Kane Six, who who wanted me to ask Mario about what kind of an espresso machine he uses. So thank you again, Sapper, and thank you to our other new reviews. And guys, we'll be back on again today. Um, Let's hope the basketball team keeps rocking and rolling as well. We'll talk more about them next time on another episode of Locked on Canes, part of the awesome Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day.